hope she traveled. And are women who made a difference. A cool kids gift to our community. Welcome to a personal interview of Mary Petros, conducted by Molly on April 19th, 2007. My name is Mary Petros, and I'm very happy to be here at Longfellow. And I just want you to know all my, all my uh, grandchildren came to this school, 18 of them. And my sister worked here years ago. So I'm very happy to be here. And thank you for inviting me. Mm -hmm. Pleasure. OK, so what made you want to start um, doing volunteer hours? Well, that's a long story. Uh, I used to take my children swimming every day. And I taught them all how to swim. Our family were swimmers. And I met a young mother with twin daughters and a son, and we got acquainted. And she wanted me to join the hospital auxiliary and be a volunteer. And so we met every day, and then we would go to the park and picnic and go home. And my husband would give us a dollar, so we'd go to the sweet shop, and all of us would get an ice cream cone and I'd get a change from the dollar even, you know. Well, anyway, I says to my husband, I says, uh, my dear friend wants me to join the auxiliary and be a volunteer. And uh, he says, well, I don't know. I, I don't think so. And I thought, well, I gotta think of something, you know. So I'm racking my brain and Joyce is my friend. So the next day I says, okay, I'll make a proposition with you. I says, if I quit playing poker with the ladies, can I be a volunteer? And he's okay. He never liked it because I played poker with the ladies. I mean, he didn't say anything. He'd throw money on the table and I say, he'd say, you better take it. I says, well, I, I don't need it. He says, yes, you always lose. You might as well take it, you know? Well, so anyway, so I joined the auxiliary. In the first year I was in, I was sec I was treasurer. They gave me a list of names, a full page to collect money from. They sold candy canisters for a dollar in those days to raise the money. Then the next year I was president. So from there on, I've been a volunteer there for like 47 years. Oh. And it's been wonderful. I work in occupational therapy. I do paperwork. And then I work in the ICU family waiting room. Mm -hmm. And that's where families go, so they're waiting for their, the patient to have surgery and to be in recovery and then to go to a room. So it's really nice. Would you want your children to do that when they grow up? Right now? Well, my children are all grown up. <laughs> Well, at the time, they were all in school and college. Mm -hmm. So, and then they were working, because everybody worked in those days. And, uh, but uh, my one son graduated and went to the university here. And his friend called him and says, Bob, they're opening a uh, Viterbo to male students. He was all, was all female and I want to be a male nurse. Will you go with me? I don't want to go alone. He says, well, gee, wait till I finish this quarter. So he went to Viterbo and got to be a registered nurse. It was a four-year course. He worked in ICU, CCU, in emergency. Then he was on the heart-lung machine during open-heart surgery. And he was there for quite a while, and then he he was the nurse in charge of the pacemaker clinic. And what that was, he could take people's pacemakers over the telephone with this machine. They had to put something on their finger while they're talking to him. And this you could just see this machine going, you know, gee, it's just like a miracle. And then I I'd stand by his by his office and he's talking to the family and to the father this one time, and he says, well, how's your son doing on the farm there? Oh, that's fine, and, and how is everybody else? And I thought, there's a nurse. He's very interested in the family, you know? And so uh, he, was, uh, he was doing that for quite a while, and then he, he works for the hospital. He travels for the hospital 
like sort of a referral services. He goes to Iowa, he goes to uh, Winona, he goes all around the area. Him and his, him and his, uh, his boss, they don't go together, they split. But they tell people that we have the helicopter, we have this and we can provide this. And everything's by appointment and a lot of doctors go with him and they explain all these things and it's very interesting. Um, when did you like first start volunteering in the community? The very first time you started? Uh, well, I uh, I belong to the to the women's shrine. I was president about three times, and then I belonged to uh, the grandmothers' club, and I was grandmother of the year. And then I belonged to AARP. I was president twice. I belong to the Moose Lodge. I'll find a couple more. American Legion, the VFW. And I take pictures for the symphony. And I donate the pictures to the symphony. And then I have copies made for all, all the people involved. And I give them to them. You're busy. Um, do you remember? What was your most recent volunteer graduate? Pardon me? Your most recent volunteer? M my most recent volunteer? Mm -hmm. Well, that's in occupational therapy, and uh, I think I could be a therapist for what I've learned being up there, you know, mm -hmm. because, you know, they're sort of their routine when they're questioning these people about their different ailments and uh, what they should do and how they should help them. And then I go in the ICU family waiting room from 3.30 until 8, 8.15 at evening. Okay. Um, about how many years do you think you've been volunteering? Like 40, about 47 years. I've got 29,000 hours of volunteer hours. Um, does your family like ever help, help out the community also with you? No. They have, they have their own, they have families of their own. Mm -hmm. See, I had ch seven children, and I have four sons that live in La Crosse. And I lost my oldest son about 20 years ago with leukemia. That was when it was pretty, they were trying everything to help him, but he fought it for five years. Um, was there someone who inspired you to start volunteering in the community? that inspired you? So My friend Joyce, f when we were at the beach. And you know what's so funny? I took her two daughters, I was a photographer. I took her two daughters wedding pictures when they were older. Um, what are some of the, your favorite aspects of volunteering? Well, it's very rewarding that you're helping somebody and you're listening and uh, you don't question. You don't question these people about anything they want to talk to you about anything and you just, you know, you listen and you, you, you just, you can't, you can't ask them questions, you know, you, you're not supposed to. Um, why did you choose to start volunteering? Well, I was talked into it, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it, it's, it's, it's great. And I, we, uh, over 20 years ago, this company from New York wanted us to put on <laughs> excuse me, a stage show, and we called it Pills a Poppin', and uh, we involved the community. Everybody was invited, and we had it at Viterbo, and uh, it, it was a wonderful thing. We, every two years, we put that, put that show on, and I was general chairman of four productions at Viterbo, and then we had to pass it on, to went to the foundation. But uh, it was great. Everybody had a wonderful time and it was a great show and, and it, anybody could be in it. No matter what size you were, if you were big, small, there was a place for you. They didn't refuse anybody, which was wonderful because say you had someone that was really heavy and you don't want to embarrass her, put her in the chorus. You know, th different things that you're, you're with a lot of people, and it's it's really, it's really nice, and make a lot of friends. Like, is there anything at all that you dislike about volunteering? Or? 
Is there anything that you dislike about volunteering? That I what? Dislike. I dislike. No, I don't do like. I don't dislike anything about volunteering because it's, it's just you're giving of yourself and you're helping people. You know. Mm -hmm. um, were you expecting to be selected for the most outstanding woman in lacrosse by the YMCA? Pardon me. Were you expecting to be selected? Um, no, I didn't know I was select. I was selected, but I didn't know that I was <coughs> going to be selected. Mm -hmm. How did you fit all those volunteer hours and activities in your schedule? Well, I, I go once a week because I can't take two days because I'm so busy with everything else, you know. And uh, so. Um, How did you feel when you won the title of Senior Miss Wisconsin? Oh, that was fun. I was on a lot of uh, convertibles. <laughs> I was in parades. I was in different things. Uh, I was invited uh, to the Miss pageants, you know, like in the area, Sparta and Holman, and uh, always a guest. And I had a chaperone uh, that was with me all the time. And uh, I'm sorry to say she just passed away I, last week, and I went to her funeral, of course. And uh, but we had wonderful times. Mm -hmm. And we, and I went when I was Miss Senior Wisconsin. We were in Atlantic City, and uh, I performed on the stage where Miss America performs, you know? Well, anyway, these women wore sequenced, beautiful gowns, beaded gowns, you know, while they were performing, and I was a bag lady. I was, I didn't have to dress fancy, you know? It was really fun. Um, what were some of the community activities that you did? Well, well, the YWCA, I take pictures for them, and I, I donate all the pictures to them. Uh, the Bishop Frecking Award, I take all the pictures for them, and I donate the pictures. I make albums for them. See that one plaque? That's from Bishop Frecking, that glass one. It's really heavy. Mm -hmm. um. With all your activities, do you see your children and grandchildren that happen? Well, I have, uh, how many grandchildren I got in town? See, I got 18 grandchildren and 14 great-grandchildren, two more great-grandchildren coming up. They call me Gigi. I, I've got uh, four great-grandchildren in South Carolina with one more coming up. Mm -hmm. I have three at one family in Mendota Heights, Minnesota, and I have five in Mendota Heights of my grandson and his wife, and I have uh, one great-granddaughter here in La Crosse. And then uh, I got a brand new granddaughter in Minnesota somewhere, just got her. No, him, his name is Joseph. What kind of activities do you like to do with your family? Get together and eat. <laughs> <laughs> we get together, and it's it's really great because everybody socializes. Can you tell me a little bit? <coughs> I'm so, I've been sick. What? Um, could you tell me a little bit about your children? My children? Mm -hmm. Well, I had five boys and two girls. My mother had five boys and two girls, and uh, they're all doing well. They all have nice families, and they're doing well. They own their own homes. They have cars. They have, and they they go to church regular, and uh, it, it's really it's really great. I call my four sons my wardens, the ones in lacrosse. Don't do this, mother. You know, I see out. Don't do this, mom. The four of them will call me, and I'll put my coat on, and then the way I go after I'm done talking to them. <laughs> Um, and could you tell me a little bit about your grandchildren? My grandchildren? <coughs> well, this one family in uh, in Mendota Heights, uh, they make their own they make their own cards and and uh, they cut out colored paper and then they'll write Grandma, you know, love. And they're, they're, they're really. They they uh, 
They school at home. And so, and see, this is a brother and sister, the one I told you, my one son who died. Mm -hmm. These are their, his two children, Lisa and Joel. And they school their children at home. And the one has five children, and the one has three. And uh, they're very polite. You don't have, they don't go running around, drive you crazy, you know. And they're, they're, they just go up and hug you, and, and they're just pleasant, so. Are there any relatives that also like volunteering? Any of my relatives? No. My, well, my granddaughter did, but she, she's in college now, out of town, so, but she, just one granddaughter volunteered. Mm -hmm. Um, did you go to college? No, I, you know, it cost $25 to go to college when I was going to school. Okay. Well, we all worked, yeah. Well, see, that was one quarter, you know. But, see, everybody worked. My five brothers worked, I worked, and all my, you know, my girlfriends that went, they all flunked the first year, mm -hmm. the first quarter. You know what? I would have flunked with them. We had so much fun in school. It's different. It's different what it is now, right? <laughs> no, I don't regret going to college. I, uh, I I worked, and we gave money to my parents, and we, we had a happy family. There were seven of us, and we had plenty of food. We had plenty of clothes, and we always had money in our pocket, and, and we got along wonderful. We, we got along wonderful. We're a good family. You said you guys had some jobs. Could you tell me about that? My job? Well, I worked at, my uncle had a store on Pearl Street between 3rd and 4th. It was Salem, Marcus, M-A-R-K-O-S, and Sons. Mm -hmm. And when I was 13 years old, they lived upstairs in a beautiful apartment above the store. And I used to do housework at 13 for my aunt. They had oriental rugs and beautiful furniture and everything else. And then as I grew older, I gradually, I made $3 a week, and I gave my mother a dollar and a half. And then when I made $6 a week, I gave my mother $3. When I made $9 a week, I gave my mother $3. We're going up a little bit, you know? And uh, when I made $12, I gave her $3. And then I worked myself into the store. And then when I was in the store, we used to get very busy. But in the morning when I get there, we worked from nine till six. And I thought, well, I think I'll change the window. So I wouldn't ask anybody. I'd just take everything out of the window, put it away, wash the windows, and put in a new dress, whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. And it, it, it was, see, the stores used to open just on Friday night. No, pardon me, Saturday night. The stores were not open otherwise, only on Saturday night. So we worked from 9 till 9, half an hour to eat. Um, are there any special friends or teachers you remember from your like, school? Oh, I remember a lot of my teachers. I was asked by the teacher to speak at uh, the Rivoli Theater about the, uh, I think it was the March of Dimes. And I thought, boy, I'm gonna get up there and say, hey, what are you doing Saturday night? Let's go to the dance and have a good time. And we're gonna raise my, the teacher says, Mary, you can't do that. I said, why? No, you can't. So she helped me. So I, I memorized this speech, right? So I went to, my girlfriends fixed my hair, they polished my nails. We went to the theater, right? Yeah. So they turned on the, all the lights in the theater. And I walked on the stage, and the girls were going like this to me, you know, you know. <laughs> so when they turned the floodlights on, wow. I talked, but I don't remember what I said. It just, 
I turned around, they clapped, and one girl said, that was wonderful. I said, I don't remember what I said. <laughs> anyway, <coughs> so I spoke to the young man who was, spoke at the Majestic Theater. That used to be on Main Street, near the cathedral. Of course, that's been down for a long time. And uh, I says, how'd you do? He says, you know, when they put those floodlights on, I don't remember what I said. I says, neither did I. Do you remember having a favorite class when you were in middle school? <coughs> well, see, I went to Washburn School. Mm -hmm. I went to Hamilton, Hamilton, Washburn. It used to be Lincoln Junior High. See, then I went to Central. Uh, but I forgot what the qu what was the question. <laughs> um, what was your? Did you have a favorite class? Oh, favorite. Well, my, I liked art. <laughs> uh, we, we, I liked my classes. I remember I used to be, uh, we used to have a 212 honor study hall at Central. And they used to have uh, a board up and then I used to, see our whole family were drawers. And I used to cut out things like Easter, I'd have an Easter board or Christmas board or spring board. That's on a diving board, right? Okay. Um, was there any teachers who inspired you to, um, to do what you're doing today? What, what am I doing today? Was there any teachers who inspired you to oh, do what you today? No. There was? No. Okay. Um, but my art teacher came to my wedding. <laughs> she was a, she was a sweet lady. Um, could you explain like what the community was like that you lived in? Well, we were happy here. We loved, loved lacrosse. We were all swimmers. We every Sunday the whole family would picnic, mm -hmm. and we'd go across the river, and then after we got done eating, we would walk over to the beach and swim. And then, of course, see, in those days, we didn't have cars. We walked, you know, we walked across the bridge. And uh, my one brother was a lifeguard, in fact. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, did you do any volunteering when you were little? No. Um, I don't think they volunteered then, that I know of. Were you... Um, like a stay-at-home mom when you had children? Or? Yes, I was stay-at-home. And then, well, I had seven children, honey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I, my husband says, I can't help you. If you need help, you have to hire it. So I always had a hired girl. But, you know, one thing, having seven children, they never talked back to us. Mm -hmm. They never argued with us. <laughs> I was sick, and uh, they were very respe respectful. Um, are you a member of a church right now? I am. I am Eastern Orthodox, but I haven't been going because I get chronic bronchial asthma from the incense. They, the church is small, mm -hmm. and I think I got a picture of me, a wedding picture. I thought, I uh, was married in the Orthodox Church, but I haven't changed my heritage, but I go to North Presbyterian Church, which is only a few blocks from my home. Mm -hmm. um, are you a member of any organizations? Uh, which organization? Are you a member of any organizations? I told, I, all those, all those, all, the ones all those places. These are all listed. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want me? To, you want me to answer those? <laughs> There's a lot of them. You want to read a couple of them? Perhaps? Well, I think I told you some of them. Okay. Well, I, well, like the Orthodox Church, though, I was uh, served as vice president and I was a council member, and I, I did sing in the choir, you know, and. Uh, And I was a bridge builder of the month, and I was with the shrine, I told you. Mm -hmm. See, we, 
I was, uh, the program for the Shrine Children's Christmas Party, I was Mrs. Santa Claus, and of course we had Santa Claus. Well, you know, uh, we had a program, and we had the children kind of participate. I had, I had flyers made of all the Christmas songs. Then I'd have them sing, and some would want to sing alone, you know. And it was really uh, a nice evening, and the Shriners gave them money and candy. And then uh, the women Shrine Auxiliary would had uh, bags of with the apple and the different things, and for them it was re it was really nice. And uh, so, oh, what I got to tell you, I uh, uh, Lorraine fought was a dance instructor. She had a dance studio for many years. And then when she retired, she formed the Offbeat Band. I'm sorry I don't have any pictures of those, but the Offbeat Band, we would go to schools, we would go to nursing homes, and uh, we dressed crazy. And I played the tambourine, and then I was MC. And, uh, I, and she could, you tell her what song to play, she just played. You know, one of those people that just sit down and play. Anyway, she, any song, she knew by heart. Anyhow, um, we had wonderful times there. And then, then I was asked to join the Variety Singers. That's local right now. See, Lorraine passed away years ago, and a lot of the people in that group passed away. But. The variety singers. I'm with the variety singers, and like, in fact, tomorrow we go to Bethany Riverside and sing. Next week we go to uh, St. Joseph Nursing Home, and then we go to Bethany St. Joe next door. And I don't, I don't remember what's after that. But Monday and Tuesday we'll be singing at the nursing home, and we wear red jackets, white blouse, white pants, red or white shoes. Everybody dresses the same. And uh, that's one thing. And then uh, I raised money for the want to be a conductor. Mm -hmm. I sent out 500 flyers. And what I did, see, because being a photographer, a lot of those flyers, I put pictures that I found that I had taken of these people, and so I put a picture in there. So I raised a lot of money, see? So I was, I was in South Carolina. Well, see, when I won, they said I could choose the evening that I wanted to conduct, either Friday or Saturday. So I said, well, Friday night, because my son and, fam and family are going to be gone on Saturday. Well, the lady that got second, she says, well, I can't Saturday night. I said, well, I'm sorry. She knew, year, you know, for a year, oh, not a year, but six months, that either sat Friday or Saturday. Well, anyway, <laughs> when I was in South Carolina, got an email, wanted to know, my daughter got an email, wanted to know if, if I would, if it was okay if Jennifer, her name was, if she would conduct on Friday the before me, and then I would conduct. Mm -hmm. So we emailed back, fine. Then we got another email. Mary, will you conduct on Saturday night too? Okay. <laughs> she didn't have to convince me, that was fun. <laughs> Um, can you tell me about like being in the Oktoberfest? Well, um, what happened, I got a phone call. Well, see, I was Torchlight Parade Marshal, too. Mm -hmm. And what happened there, uh, I got a call and wanted me to uh, speak about some pictures. Because I take, I take pictures for the uh, Oktoberfest, and I don't charge them. I just charge them what it costs me. So uh, so I went to this man's office with uh, my pad and my pen in my hand. And he says, uh, I, his name was Walt Hammond, a real nice man. I says, hi, Walt, what do you want? He says, well, you're going to be our torchlight parade marshal. I said, OK, but what kind of pictures do you want me to take? He's Mary. 
we want you to be the torchlight parade marshal. I was like, oh, okay. okay. You know, big deal. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so then when I was, I was called, uh, this teacher says, Mary, I'm, I'm, I'm retiring and I want some pictures taken at my retirement party. And so we try to get a date to, you know, to get together. And I said, well, listen, I'm volunteering at the hospital. And her husband was a doctor at the hospital even. And uh, well, if you could meet me in the dining room, that would be great. Oh, okay. So her and this other lady met me. And so I had my pad and my pen. And I said, okay, Carol. All right, now, we got to take family pictures. That's very important. You know, I'm telling her. She's Mary. You're our new Mrs. Oktoberfest. I said, oh, okay. Now, what kind of pictures? <laughs> Dummy, right? <laughs> I was, I'm worried about pictures. You know, I got to take these pictures. So that's what happened. <laughs> um, are there any other hobbies that you like to do? <sighs> All I do, honey, is make albums, pictures, pictures, mail pictures. That reminds me, I got to mail some pictures tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, can you tell me about some of the awards you've won? Cause I know. Oh, there's so many of them. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, <coughs> well, I got an award from the Festmasters. They gave me that plaque and they gave me that mug. Hello. Anyway, oh, and uh, I got that. I got that. Uh, Back from when I was Miss Senior Wisconsin in Atlantic City. Other people didn't get that little award, but I got an award. And then I got the uh, the one award with that with that medal that I hang up. Uh, one of the ten most honored senior citizen in the state of Wisconsin. That's that big one. And uh, oh, I got a lot of awards over there. If you could change one thing, what would you want it to be? Nothing. Everything's fine. I'm happy with everything that I've done and every, all the uh, all the people I'm involved with. You know, they're really nice people. If there was one spot in your life that you could relive, what would it be? I don't know. I've got everything I need. Mm -hmm. I've got a wonderful family. I've got wonderful grandchildren and great grandchildren, and they're, and they're still coming. And there'll be a lot more because I got some grandsons that are not married that are in college. And uh, it's it's they're wonderful men. These grandsons, they're really great. I just stand by the door and they give me a hug and I look up at them, they're about 10 feet tall, you know. <laughs> but they're very nice. My one grandson goes to college in Madison and he was in Egypt a couple months, for a couple of months. And uh, he got some kind of award and everything was paid for and that he could go. And I think he just stayed a month and a half. He wanted to come home. He was kind of homesick, you know? <laughs> but he, see, our language is Arabic. And he went to school to learn Arabic, and they say he speaks it fluently. Boy, you should hear my Arabic. Ya Habibi, that's you, sweetheart. Shubadik, what do you want? It's pretty good for me, kid. <laughs> I don't need any more awards. <laughs> Sorry. No, I, I, well, I, I, you just can't imagine all of a sudden they're, they're awarding. Well, the biggest thing is the Hall of Excellence, and that was for Central, and I had to speak at the, uh, graduation, but I made it a speech real short because 
all these graduates, they don't want to, see there was two other men that had to speak. And uh, I thought, just make it short. And I just told them, I said, I hope you have the wonderful memories I had while I was going to Central. And I wished them all luck and I just made it short because, and then my son escorted me and, and my two sons took me in. Then I went back to the telephone. See, I've been, I've been with the telephone since it started. And I take pictures for them, and then I just charge them what it cost me. I don't, you know, make any money. Because, see, I'm a wedding photographer. I am a photographer. And I sort of semi-retired. Now, see that, that beautiful gown right there with the tie? That was a cave, <laughs> cave woman outfit. And we had two other... No, one man and two other ladies, and we put on an act, and we put on an act at ARP even, and uh, but we the jazz on the green was at North Presbyterian Church, and that that one picture I showed you, I was Dolly, so th what these guys sang was Hello Mary, well Hello Mary, you know, anyway, so and then uh, we put on that. Act two, and then I sang A Good Man's Hard to Find because he was flirting with this other gal, it wasn't it, you know? And then we put on another act too, but it, it's just a lot of fun. It, it's just something that's really great. Do I ever meet them? Yeah, like the new people that. Well, see, I'm on the committee for, see, right now they're getting nominations for the new Mrs. Oktoberfest, and I'm on the committee, so we have to read all these uh, recommendations. And I have been on that committee, they kind of alternate, you know. And this one time when I was on the committee, they says, gee, this is really great. I says, no. I says, she gets paid. We want people that do volunteer work for the community, and don't get paid for the job they're doing. That's what it's all about. Somebody who does things for our community and uh, the church and whatever, you know? How do you think life is harder or easier for kids nowadays than it was when you were Well, honey, you know, we had such a, a wonderful family that we all worked and we, and we were happy going to school. We walked from 3rd Street to Central to 16th, 20 below zero, you know? Nobody had cars. We walked. And then, uh, see, I used to take, we used to take our own, uh, our own, uh, we call it Telemi. Maybe your parents have been to Phasius. <coughs> Sorry. And they have telami. Telami is our Syrian bread, but when we make it, it's round like this and about this thick. Well, my my husband's nephew called me. He wanted the recipe, so they make their buns for their hamburger and stuff with telami dough. But anyway. Um, I didn't. I, I think I brought some pictures of me swinging the flatbread. I call it Syrian lefsa because you make it and it gets this big. But we, we swing it in the air like this, and then it gets real big. I think I got some pictures in those envelopes. I got all the envelopes marked so you can see it. And I sing. I sing. I have the radio on and I sing while I'm swinging the dough. You know. Yeah. Like the bread? See what happens is bread, I can bake 34 loaves in one hour. See, once you start, you can't stop. See, I've got an old fashioned gas stove on legs in the basement. And see, my husband and his, uh, uh, his brother 
and his father originally had the scrap yard up on George Street. That's where it used to be right next to my house. And he cut me an iron plate. So, and then, and then there's a little grate between the four burners, gas burners. And then I put this plate on that one grate. It's about this high. And then you oil that, see? Then you swing the dough. You pad the dough. You swing it. You put it on this plate. And then you're working on another one. Then when it gets brown on the bottom, you put it in the oven. Then you swing the dough. You just keep going. And now you could just, when you're done, you could just crush it. But I take it upstairs, and I've got a sheet blanket on the kitchen table. Then you take and you put warm water on both sides of this bread, and you lay it down like that. Then you cover it. Then you let it rest like for a half an hour or 45 minutes. Then when you're done, you just fold it, and then you can freeze it or whatever. And then when you eat this bread, you tear a piece, and you put your meat in it, or you put your potatoes in it, or you put, if you want jelly, you roll jelly and you roll it up. It's, I call it Syrian lefsa, but it's, but they like my bread. <laughs> did you have any fears that you conquered? What fears did you have and how did you get over them? What fears did I have? Mm -hmm. None. No Never had any fears. No. Uh, you know, when we were growing up, we had so much love in our family, and uh, and we all gave, and we all went to church. We sang in the choir. We belonged. To, we were raised at the Episcopal Church because our Orthodox Church didn't have a priest at the time. And so when there was a priest, he'd come maybe once every two months from St. Paul. Then we would automatically go to the Orthodox Church, but it was all in Arabic. We couldn't understand it, but we went because we had a, you had to sit like this, you know. Anyway, uh, but uh, then later in years, later in years, we did get a priest, and they weren't uh, they were not Syrian, but they were Orthodox, and they was an it was in English, and that's when I was active at the time. But then I had to stop because I had to go to the doctor all the time because of the incense. See, an hour before the service, the priest goes up and down with incense, that's, I guess, to purify the church. And then during the service, they use the incense a lot, too, and they go around the church down the aisle. Excuse me. Anyway. Are there any fond memories in the past that you might want to tell us about? I got to tell you a little story. I uh, on the t on the radio, they had a contest. They wanted to know about your Christmas story. So my when we were growing up, and we were pretty, some of them were pretty small at the time. My father said, I'm sorry, we can't have a Christmas tree. My sister passed away in Syria. So we just went, oh, we felt so bad. In those days, at 4 o'clock, stores would close, gasoline stations would close, and we always had a lot of snow in those days at the right time. and. It was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful night for Christmas Eve, and we didn't have a tree. My brother George and I, or was it Mike? Well, either one. We were really sad, so we start walking, and we were so sad. We came to a grocery store, and by this grocery store, there were some Christmas trees laying down. So. We thought, well, nobody, there's nobody here. We'll just, we dragged a Christmas tree home and we brought it in the house and we put it up and my dad says, Merry Christmas. Well, you know what I won? I won a dinner <laughs> at the, oh, what's the name of it? Anyway, at the supper club. 
dinner, dance, a motel room, breakfast in the morning, and Peter Schreier was the uh, was the uh, was the the announcer that called me and said I had won. I said, "Well, Peter, I says, well, you go with me and, and you can dance." He's married. You know, I'm married. I said, "Well, I know your wife's Nancy. That's okay." <laughs> So anyway, so they gave me the date and everything. So I called my friend Joyce, the one that got me to be a volunteer, and I, she says, I, so I explained to her, I says, I try to call your brother Tom. He's, her brother's a real good dancer. She says, well, he's probably in the shower. Anyway, so I called back and I says, Tom, I says, what are you doing New Year's Eve? It was for New Year's Eve. He says, well, I don't have anything planned. I says, hey, how about a date? I won this contest. Dinner at the, uh, was it Moxie's then? Whatever. Anyway, dinner, dance, breakfast, stay at the motel. So, hey, that sounds great. So we went, we had a great time, okay? So what happened, the next day I said, well, I'll meet you in the lobby for breakfast. And, and well, that night we took pictures in the lobby and so the next day I met him for breakfast. Then he walked me to my room so I get my suitcase, okay? So as we we're walking, me with this good looking guy, we get by the swimming pool and who's in the swimming pool but all these Oktoberfest grenadiers and their wives and their kids. Hi, Mary. And I, he's rolling my suitcase. Just, it wasn't a big one. Rolling my suitcase and we're walking. I thought, what are they thinking? <laughs> I was with this guy, you know? No way. <laughs> anyway, uh, so, <laughs> so I said, hey, you guys, I'm going to take your picture. So I took their picture while they're in the swimming pool. But uh, in another contest that I won, I forgot what that was for. It was to see, uh, what's his name? He used to uh, he used to have the children's program. Kids say the darndest thing. So anyhow, you could have three other people and me. Dinner at Fazie's. Go to Viterbo. <coughs> Isn't that awful? Anyway, go to Viterbo. And. A limousine, a white limousine came and picked me up. And then we picked up the other people. So we went to, we went to the Viterbo, and people were standing outside when they saw this, oh, this beautiful white limousine pull up. They probably thought it was, what's his name? I can't think. Anyway, they thought it was the star who was gonna speak. So we get out of the limousine, okay? So we go and we watch that. And then we came, when we came out, we'll see when we had dinner at Fazie's, the limousine came and picked us up and then we, okay. So then when we came out of the turbo, the limousine was sitting there and people were standing out there with their cameras. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we get out and we get in it. What goes around the corner with a black limousine around the back end of the turbo? I thought that was an ugly old limousine. We had a beautiful white limousine. And this, this gentleman that was driving, he says, you're Mary, aren't you? And I said, yes. He says, I took a picture of you and one of the fest masters in the back seat of the limousine, didn't I? I said, yeah, remember? <laughs> well, see what happened. Uh, my friend, this fest master, we were, checking on who the new fest master was going to be and they said he'd be in that limousine so we went back there and this and this jim the, the he said why don't you two get in the back and i'll take your picture with your camera mary i said okay so we did i think i got it with me <laughs> you can't beat fun you know and uh this oktoberfest group of people are wonderful people they're 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 gentlemen. They're kind and they're friendly, and it's really nobody knows how much time you put when you're with the Oktoberfest. 
You know what I mean? You you just you're you're they devote their time and they work. And a lot of these young people who have children, you know, and they bring their children and wheel them at the, you know, all the parades. We go to a lot of parades. So, yeah, I ride on the Festmasters float, you know. I think, I think the old lady shouldn't be walking, right? <laughs> so. Anything else you want to know? Let's see. Oh, I, I was, I belong to the Grandmother's Club too. I was president about three or four times. But that's a real nice group. Uh, we have just more of a social group, you know. And uh, it, it, it's, it's a lot of fun. When, uh, you know, every July, you know, the Riverfest, mm -hmm. the Commodores, they have uh, they have a service for the, they choose a new Commodore, and I always take pictures and make an album for him, and then I take pi extra pictures and give the, give them, I pass them out, mm -hmm. so, so. Okay. That one uh, medal that I showed you, that was, uh, in Brookfield, Wisconsin, and uh, that w that was great. We went to uh, the Milwaukee Milwaukee Fair, and then we were in a parade and everything. It, it's 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 been a lot of fun. This podcast brought to you from across Wisconsin by the Cooler Kids at Longfellow Middle School, in conjunction with the League of Women Voters.